Bibles out, ready to open the Word of God. We continue our series, Amazing Grace, It's Amazing. And we sang the song, Amazing Grace, a few moments ago, but we rarely sing verse 4. Many times, as we're growing up in church, we sing verse 1, 2, and 5, or we, we usually or typically will skip over some verse, and sometimes the verses that we skip over have the greatest meaning. They're embodied in the, in the, in the depth of the song, and verse 4 gives us really, captures the essence of what grace is. It says, the Lord has promised good to me. Praise God. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. And that first verse, that first stanza of that verse, the Lord has promised good to me. Aren't you glad? God didn't promise bad to me. God didn't promise barely getting through to me. God didn't promise barely getting by to me. Bible or, or the song says, God promised good to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The good God promised is not based upon our goodness or our worthiness or our worth. Philip Yancey said, and I love this quote, he said, grace like water flows to the lowest part. Grace like water flows to the lowest part. Now what does that mean to me? What that means is I was low. In fact, I'll just tell you, I was low down. And grace God poured grace into my life. Not because I was up high, but because I was down low. Not because I could reach up to God because I couldn't get to Him, but because He could reach down into my life. Great is not acquired like a reward for the good that we do. Grace is given to us. In simple terms, last Sunday, we talked about what the term or what the definition of grace is. And, and I made it very simple because I need things to be simple. I, I, think, I think often we try to make things so complicated. And when we can't even grasp the simple things, when we can't sometimes obey the simple things, how in the world do we think we're going to be able to grasp the, the complicated and difficult things? Furthermore, let me just say to you, God always makes things simple. Now, I'm not saying that God is simple. Far be it from me to say such a thing. But what I am saying is God understands I'm simple. And so he puts it in those terms. Here's the definition, simple definition of grace. It is unearned kindness and approval for one who is unworthy. Unearned. We talked about that last Sunday. Kindness, favor. What I want to talk about just a little bit this morning. And the approval for one who is completely and totally unworthy. But not only was unworthy, would always be unworthy. Do you know that you will always be unworthy? Nothing you do will qualify you to be right in the eyes of God. But hallelujah, Jesus came and set me free from having to be right with God. By my own value, my own worth, my own actions, it just isn't going to happen. It's grace, amazing grace. Billy Graham was driving through a small town years and years ago, and uh, he just happened to be speeding. And he saw that light going off. He pulled over to the side. The officer came and wrote him out a ticket. Gave him his driver's license. He realized it was, this is Billy Graham. But he'd already written out the ticket, so he couldn't tear it up. So he, Billy Graham had to appear in court. And when he got to the judge, stood before the judge, the judge looked at the ticket and said, guilty or not guilty? And Dr. Graham said, guilty. Guilty. And then the judge still looking down at the piece of paper not looking up he said that'll be ten dollars one dollar for every mile you were over the speed limit dr graham said yes sir finally the judge looked up and recognized that's billy graham standing in front of me so the judge said to billy graham you violate violated the law and the fine must be paid the fine must be paid but i'm going to pay it for you so the judge took out his wallet, took out $10, true story, took out $10, attached it to the ticket, and laid it aside. But not only that, after court was over, the judge took him out and bought him a steak dinner as well. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that is grace. That is grace. Grace that Brazewood Fondren Campus experiences, grace that 
Branch Forest campus experiences, grace that Hispanic campus experiences, that's the grace of God. Not only did he pay the fine, but he added great blessings to us as well. Grace begins with unearned kindness or favor. And finding favor means, number one, we gain approval. Finding favor means we gain acceptance. Finding favor means we gain special benefits. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll take every one of those. When it comes to God, I'll I'll accept that I've gained His approval of me. I'll, I'll accept that not only has He approved of me, but take it another step. He has accepted me. But I also appreciate that I have gained special benefits. Not only did that judge pay the price for that ticket but he also took him out for a steak dinner that's that's special benefits god provides those to us but lest we forget let's also focus on the fact that it is gaining we are gaining everything about serving god is a gain in our lives it is god adding into our life that's grace It's not God removing, but let me say, if God asks me to give up anything, if God asks me to surrender something, if God asks me to to give something, it's only because He has something else for me. God never leaves a void in our lives. God will never leave a vacuum in your life. Anything you give, it's because He has something He wants to give. And how many of you know, whatever I give to God, I receive much more than I have ever given. Infinitely more. We are gaining in this relationship with God. And I kind of wonder, what's God gaining? Ask the Branch Forest campus, what is God gaining? Ask the Hispanic campus, what is God gaining in a relationship with me? Ask Fondren campus, what is God gaining by a relationship with me? I have nothing to give him that is of any value except to give him what he's looking for, and that is a relationship with me. You were created to have a relationship with God. You weren't created to be His servant. Prodigal Son's lesson teaches us that. You, you You weren't brought into this grace so that you could work for God. You were brought into this grace to have relationship with God, to be His son. I am a son of God. I am. You are a daughter of God. We are children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. That He doesn't count us as somebody off in the corner or just set us aside and tolerates us. We are gaining in this life. And first of all, we are gaining We are gaining approval. Praise God. Approval means support. Approval means honor. How many of you know that God honors His children? God honors His children. God God supports us. Every one of us have experienced that kind of support. When we are weak, He has made us strong. That's what Paul said. In my weakness, I have discovered that God has brought strength into my life. Not my strength, but His strength. The strength of the Word, the strength of the Spirit that indwells my life. We are approved of God. Romans chapter 4, verse 23 through 25. And I'm reading from the God's Word translation. It says, but the Word's Abraham's faith was regarded as a basis of his approval by God, were written not only for him, but also for us. Our faith, listen to these words, our faith will be regarded as the basis of our approval by God. God approves of you. Isn't that an amazing thing? God approves of you of you each of us who believe in the one who brought Jesus our Lord back to life verse 25 says Jesus our Lord has handed over death because of our failures and was brought back to life so that we could receive God's approval that God would say I'm gonna support you that God would say I'm gonna honor you you are a child of God can I tell you the reason the devil hates you is because you're a child of God The reason the devil wants to steal, rob, kill, and destroy is because you're a child of God. And the honor and the blessing of the Lord is upon your life every day. Every single day. God approved of you before anyone else had a chance to disapprove of you. You can stand in the presence of God by grace, favor, and say, God has approved of me. But secondly, we are gaining acceptance. 
Not only has he approved of me, but he's accepted me. The story of the prodigal son does, tells us that the prodigal son woke up, I'll be a servant, I'm not good enough to be a, 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 a son. I've squandered the right to be a, a child of my father. Just as in sin, you and I squandered the right to be called a child of God. We had no way, there's no way to get to God in our own righteousness. And yet God said, though you are unacceptable in yourself, through grace, I will count you as acceptable. God accepts me. What does accept, accept mean? Accept means God recognizes me. In fact, the Bible tells us that he recognizes us so much that he knows my name. You know, I go, I go places and I think, you ought to know my name, but they don't remember my name. In fact, when I go to somebody, rarely will I say, do you remember me? Don't do that to anybody. That's a horrible thing. Do you know my name? It's, 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 it puts a person on the spot. What I do, when I go and meet somebody, I always say, hi, I'm Pastor Steve, or I'm Steve Banning. I let them know who I am. And typically what they'll say is, oh, I remember you. And I think to myself, right. Right, that's awful nice of you. However, we have some leaders in our fellowship, uh, Dr. Trask, uh, Dr. Wood, and others, that every time I meet them, they call me by name. I don't know how in the world they do that. It's a gift, I guess. And I don't have that gift. I look in the mirror and have to introduce myself to myself every morning. <laughs> Who are you? But he recognizes us. So that when we call his name, he recognizes who's calling him. Out of all of the billions of people who will pray today and call out the name of God, he knows my name. And can I tell you, he will never forget my name. I'll never hear God say, uh, excuse me, could you introduce yourself to me? When I call him, he knows that's Steve Banning. That's my son. He recognizes me. But it also means, and I love this, acceptance means he embraces me. We celebrated the life of Mercedes. Uh, what's, what was the last name? Robinson. Mercedes Robinson. Longtime member of Brazewood. And, and I just think when, when, when somebody goes to heaven, the Bible says, precious in the sight of God are the saints. And I just imagine that when we go to God and, and we, we're ushered into His presence, that God's not standing there all stiff and rigid and just like He's mad at us all the time. Here's what I envision. I envision God with His arms open wide. I envision a father who is welcoming his son into his presence. And I'd rush into his arms and he just, like my dad, he'd just give me that big old bear hug and pick me up off the ground and just love on me. Why? Because he embraces me as his son. Not only does he know my name, but he embraces me. He wants to be close to me. Romans chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. And since by his blood we, he did all of this for us sinners, how much more will he do for us now that he has declared us not guilty? Grace. Now he will save us from all of God's wrath to come. And since when we were his enemies, we were brought back to God by the death of his son. Listen to this. What blessings he must have for us now that we are his friends and he is living within us. What blessings there must be. Why? Because he has accepted me as his son. He's accepted me as his child. And can I tell you, even when I get dirty, he still accepts me. Even when I fall down and I scrape my knees spiritually, He accepts me. Even when I have failed my worst failure, He still remembers my name and He accepts me. Somebody shout hallelujah. God is minutely and acutely aware of every skeleton in your closet. And He still accepts you. We gain. And finally, we are gaining special benefits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not only, you know, it would be enough that we would be forgiven. It would be enough that we would be able to get to heaven. It would be enough that we come together to worship God. But God says, that's not enough, friend. That's not enough, child. Not only, like the prodigal son again, not only are you brought back into my family, but I'm going to shower you with my blessings. I'm going to cover you with my blessing. Brother and sister, God never runs out of blessings for your life. In Branch Forest, God never runs out of blessings in your life. Here at Fondren, God never runs out of blessings. The well of God's blessings never run dry. And can I tell you something else? He never tires of blessing His children. 
I'll put it another way. He never gets tired of seeing a smile on your face when you receive something good from Him. But we must also recognize that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. You see, those special benefits are special advantages. Did you ever think of that? Has anyone ever been a teacher's pet? I, one time in my life I was a teacher's pet. One time. The other times I was the other side of the coin. One time I was a teacher's pet. You get special privileges when you're a teacher's pet. But if something else happens when you're a teacher's pet, nobody likes you. Can I tell you? You're God's favorite, and devil doesn't like you. And I say this, all well. I'll receive those special advantages, special assistance, benefits. When I can't do it, God will do it for me. When I can't be it, God will be it in me. Special assistance, special support. Praise the Lord. When you're about to fall down, Holy Spirit will lift you right back up again. And He won't crop you up, or excuse me, prop you up. He will put strength and power within your life. But here's another thing, and I love this. Those special benefits are special help from God. Special help from God. Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5 says, Let my whole being bless the Lord. I think that ought to be our, that ought to be our, our commandment every day. Let everything that I have, everything that I am bless the Lord. Let everything inside me bless His holy name. And never forget all of His benefits. Never forget that we have gained special benefits. And then the psalmist goes on to say how God forgives our sins. That ought to be number one. Heals our sicknesses, saves us from our life from the pit, crowns you with faithful love and compassion, and satisfies you with plenty of good things. And that's just, that's just a part of the list. That's not the whole of the list. That's just in part those special benefits that come to me not because of who I am, but because of what God has provided. Grace, it's amazing. When we get a grip on grace and we recognize these aspects of faith, that it is approval. God approves of you, but more than that, He accepts you. You know, I can approve of somebody and not accept them. You know? I can approve. I can, I can be around somebody. I can work with somebody. I can know somebody and not approve of them. But thank God, God knows us and He accepts us as His child. I think it's important that we say this morning, I am a child of God. Say it with me. I am a child of God. How powerful those words are. I am a child of God. He approves of me, accepts me, and He pours out special blessings into my life. Why? Because of His grace. Because as we define grace before, it is grace begins with favor. It is that unearned kindness and approval for one who is unworthy. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, we bless you and thank you this morning for grace. For we declare, Heavenly Father, grace, it is amazing. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that today we enter into that, that grace, that favor, unearned favor of, of approval. That unearned favor of acceptance, that unearned favor of the special blessings. We gain those things in our life. Father, what I have lost when I came to you as my Lord and Savior is nothing. In fact, what I have lost, I am happy I've lost it. Because what I have gained is so much better. I have gained approval of God. I have gained your acceptance as you would embrace me. As a father would embrace a son. I have gained blessing upon blessing upon blessing and father knowing that all of my life those blessings will never run out favor i pray father that if there's somebody here this morning that has not entered into that relationship that brings about these special blessings the gain of life doesn't come because we join a church doesn't come because we know about you it doesn't come because we've lived a, 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 a moral life it can only come into my life as a gift of grace. So Father, today, if there's anyone in this place that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray that they would be willing to give up what they hold on to so strongly and yet bring so much pain and anguish to let it go and gain approval, gain acceptance, gain special blessings by simply praying that prayer, Father, forgive me of my sins when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
Having prayed that prayer, Father, I can declare I am a child of God. I am a son. I am a daughter of God. And that will be my lot forever. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And Father, as verse 4 says, you have promised good to me. We might even say, Lord, you have promised gain to me. And I receive that by faith, by grace, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen.